stoked to be in the studio today, dude. Um, this is something that you and I and the creative team have been talking about quite a bit. Jeez, it seems like probably in the last maybe six months, if you really want to take it back. But that is the Innova rebrand. And um, we've been in the thick of it, man. You know, we we came up with a new logo design and you and the illustrators have been cranking out a seemingly bottomless uh, list of new artwork for discs. So we're here to talk about it. Uh, so all the fans out there can kind of get a look under the hood about what, what it's like for our art team to tackle a rebrand. You're right in that it is a big project. It's, you know, 80 plus active molds and five different plastic types. Uh, it, it adds up to a lot, but we had started to go through this process almost a full year ago and it wasn't really like a full rebranding. Uh, that we were initially thinking of, but we had started using the Innova text from the swoosh uh, because we were running into some issues with using the swoosh logo. It wouldn't come across as uh, very legible and when it was printed in small sizes, like the front of a shirt or hot stamped small, there was a lot of you know, bridging that was happening with the foils. We were just running into a lot of issues with it and we had tried to alleviate some of those by just using the text from the swoosh logo but it came across as cleaner on a shirt and more legible but it was still very short and very long for only being five letters so we weren't quite at that you know that sweet spot for legibility that we uh, wanted to get to the logo lost its soul as soon as we like extracted those letters out and kind of put them by themselves like that for somebody who isn't familiar with innova and especially the swoosh logo they can't connect the dots between oh, that's from that Innova Disc Golf logo. And if they're new to Disc Golf, they're like, okay, what's Innova? Are you the pet company? Are you, you know, <laughs> right? like, you can be Innova anything, right? When we were just using the letters, that's all they were, it's just letters. There wasn't any particular style about them that, you know, made it feel special or unique other than if you knew the swoosh logo that we were using already. This next part, I think, is a cool insight for, for people to understand and kind of uh, get into our world. And this is an exercise that I think happens whenever we're taking on a, a big, uh, larger scale project. And that is you get the illustrators involved in a uh, team-wide exercise. And we start at a very broad level in a sketch phase and then really twiddle it down to something that you and the team and we feel is like, that's the winner. If we have a um, a wide open idea or we're trying to get a, a lot of ideas down, we'll ask for two to three concepts from everybody on the art team. The Innova logo in particular, I wanted one idea that was just outside of the box. Anything you want to do, no limits, no restraints, come up with something that you think looks cool and is like sporty. So that was like the outline for one of the versions. Another one was come up with something that's recognizable as an Innova logo. So we want something that's going to resemble something that we've done in the past, but evolve it and modernize it into uh, what we're looking for. You and I both feel pretty grateful to have um, both a talented and I'll use your word synergistic team, but they're also selfless as hell, man. Like these guys and again, getting back to why we love those uh, sketch meetings where we talk at a very high level about what they're bringing to the table, everybody checks the ego at the table and they're excited. We all are. We're like, ooh, it's critique day, you know? And it's like, it reminds you of like any like of your favorite college art classes where like you, you walked in and, and artwork's up on the wall and everybody's walking around and they're looking what everybody's doing. And everybody has a little sixth sense on this one here has got something special. Nobody takes a slight when their sketch isn't chosen. If anything, they're great at giving feedback at the ones that they recognize are really strong. I mean, let's just introduce everybody to the talent that we have on the team. CJ was the first outside illustrator that we had hired. Uh, he came here about a year after you, so about six years. Uh, he's been working with us. And he was one of the first illustrators that like didn't he he wasn't super involved with disc golf he might have he might have heard of it or seen it around but he he wasn't a player but uh, we both recognized the talent that he had 
um, through his Instagram channel and his uh, something that he doesn't really show off in his Instagram channel, but his his logo designs are off the hook. Yeah, I mean, for people who don't know it, like CJ, I'm pretty sure Las Vegas Challenge, USDGC, USDGC doubles. God, I know he's done more. I know he has. The Las Vegas Challenge yearly artwork that gets that put out there. Yep. That other branding happened a while before him, but he has done... Wasn't this last year, but the year before that, where it was just the USDGC shield and wings. That worked so good as an icon and for animating uh, everything. It's still, to this day, one of my favorites that's been out for USDGC. Following him up, we hired Chris about a year later. He's an immense talent insofar as uh, character design. That's what I say his big plus is. His anatomy for any type of animals or people is always down. And he's got a really creative, like fun, cartoony style that like he loves to do, but he can still throw it down and make like a, a mean looking robot, you know? <laughs> and our most recent hire is Jeremy. Um, so he came in, boy, I guess it was about a year ago. If that, if that, yeah. He's come in and taken a lot of the custom stuff, his textures, his patterns, his layout, and his technical ability and file preparation. Those are the things that uh, he really excels at. But like that Star Charger, for instance, that's one, uh, his his own character design that came up. So very talented in a number of different uh, areas as well. Yep. We get all these sketches in from Chris and CJ and Jeremy. I think you even contributed some of the sketches. This is the part of it that I like because I actually get to like jump in with you guys and like and, and at least give some commentary and part of the critique. We ended up, focusing on a design that Jeremy came up with. And even if you're not the individual who we as a team collectively think comes up with the design, there's something about everybody contributing positively to the design, even if they weren't the ones who came up with it. You guiding Jeremy and taking his design and then collectively we kind of throw some feedback and then, you know, what happened from there, like from the initial concept that he put forward, how did we get to this? Critiques are one of my favorite times uh, of dealing with the art team ever. You know, it's a way that we all get to come together and really talk about design at its core and give feedback to each other on what's working, what we like, what we don't think is as successful. It really gets into like the heart and soul of design. And, and that's why it's one of my favorite favorite times anytime that we have a project that we're doing critiques on so it's it can feel laborious after you're done with three of them you know but at the same time like it's really important to get it right i see you and i as like the brand stewards uh when it comes to um making sure that especially something that has a very broad reach is very innova right and i think you and i work really well at identifying the bits and parts that are both uh, that honor the tradition of Innova, but also look forward, right? In innovation is in our name. And you and I, we always are are looking to push the team forward creatively and make sure that like, hey, you guys can take this to the next level. We sit there and we look at collectively as a team and then we we start to like talk about not just the design of things, but the tactics and like implementing it. How does that look on a disc? How does that look over here on a shirt? How does that look on a sticker? event branding, uh, digital branding for, you know, video and, and social media and things like that. So run them through the exercise of, okay, what if w with all these different um, channels, how does it, how does it work? You know, reproduction was one of our biggest issues with the previous logo. So that's something that we wanted to definitely nail with this one. From the early concept, I think a lot of the changes that we had made were in the the heart of reproduction. So it was making the letters a little bit taller than what they were previously. It was thinning them down so they'll work better at a larger size and a smaller size without bridging or uh, anything on hot stamp. At the same time, maintaining that cool, you know, burst, you know, logo that we have in there. So the burst comes from the four pointed end of a star, and we wanted a way to include that star, but within the text that we're doing. I think a lot of people at this point, if they've stuck in long enough in this video to this point, 
they're like, man, these guys are geeking out pretty damn hard on branding. The hope is that they can get some insight into like why we care like we do for the, the work that we do. Our work is not farmed out. We have a very small group of very, very talented people who they don't oversee just branding, but they oversee all of the artwork that goes on every disc that comes out of our factory. They do tour series. So all of the tour series stuff that goes out has their handiwork on it, your your direction on it. Yep. And event branding, social, like all the things that I named, social media, video, product development, right? Placement and colors, apparel, all of that stuff. This team is responsible for all that. So yeah, we're probably geeking out on it a little bit, but I guess the hope is that people can understand that we're not paying an agency to do this stuff. It's done by people who have, how long have you been here, dude? I've been here since uh, 2006. Exactly. You've been here since 2006. I feel like a short timer and I've almost been here for eight years. I believe in my, and especially in my experience prior to coming to Innova, and I've seen working with agencies and the disconnect that you have with an agency versus a very, very seasoned in-house art and design team is that you lose that lack of culture. You lose that connection to tradition. How are you supposed to even make the leap forward to evolve something if you can't speak to where it came from? Yeah. You know, and you've been here. Dude, did you not design the original freaking Protostar? First Proto Run uh, stamp that was ever put on disc, the Four Pointed Star, one of my first design projects when I got here. When was that? 2000, 2006. 2006. There you go. There you go. You definitely, you need to have that focus. And, and we're both here because we love disc golf, you know, and, and that started for us earlier than working for Innova. Yeah, absolutely. It was something that we both loved and we were both lucky enough to end up here together working for the, the inventor of the golf disc, you know. The new logo checks a lot of the boxes that you and I thought that just that letter logo was falling a little short. Maybe now let's kind of dive into what are those boxes. When you see Calvin out there playing and you see that burst logo on his back, uh, it works really well, even at a, a size that's all the way across his shoulders, you know. Comes across clear. It's not too thick. There's enough relief in there that is... Not just, you know, solid plaster. So for him, he's not getting a sweaty back, right? At, at least I hope not. He hasn't, said, <laughs> he, he hasn't said anything about it yet. That's true. That's true. We should probably pull him. Hey, Calvin. But yeah, it also works at really small sizes. You know, it's legible because the letters are tall on the front of a shirt. And there's enough relief there where you're getting, you know, the burst show through. It's still legible. You can still read it plain as day, uh, no matter if it's small, if it's huge, if it's on a hot stamp, not a lot of bridging that happens. It can be used at a lot of different sizes. So those were all the boxes and embroidery, like your hat right there. Those are all the boxes that we wanted to check. We wanted to make sure that it worked really well in all those applications. And I think it works heads and shoulders above everything that we've ever done before. When I see people wearing this hat, I, I like it. I like seeing this on people's uh, hats. I know there's something about it. <clears throat> Even the, the swoosh logo looked good on hats, but there's something about this this form factor that for whatever reason, it just uh, it looks good wherever I've seen it, man. Yeah, it just fits the space so it well. It fits the space. In, in a lot of different applications. Yeah. So, yep. Let's dive into what we do best, and that is making discs, right? This is such an interesting topic too. And and to a lot of people out there, it's a pretty sensitive one. The look of Innova Discs, hot stamps, and other designs, right? Especially going way back, people are really, really uh, passionate about Innova Designs. And especially those collectors, it's like you talk to a collector, they can tell you or I probably more about where Innova branding has gone than you or I know, you know? So we don't take that uh, passion for Innova's branding lightly. Your direction with the team in rebranding all of these discs, you know, 80 plus molds across, you know, however many plastics that we've got, you guys have uh, started to tackle that. So let's kind of dive in a little bit. 80 plus molds, five different plastics. And this, the whole start of the rebranding happened during the pandemic when disc golf was soaring to incredible heights and everybody was playing. And as everybody's playing, 
the discs are flying off the shelves. There wasn't anything left in stock, you know? I mean, it was it was hard for production to keep up. Production couldn't keep up, dude, you remember. Production had a very hard time meeting demand, and everybody was buying whatever they could get their hands on. You know, there's a lot of new people that got in the disc golf during the pandemic, and with this rebrand going on in the back of our minds, like, what better time to redo every single lineup than when inventory is at its lowest, you know? So that's that's what had uh, spurred a lot of this. We had kind of worked on, I guess our first rebrand was the G-Star. And that was before the rebrand of the logo. So we had started including character stamps on uh, G-Star discs. And finally there was a stock premium version of a golf disc that had a cool character stamp on it. So a lot of people have been asking that for that uh, over the years. Why? why don't yeah, they more have character these, stamps. Why don't they have these cool art on, you know, like star and champion? And so we wanted to bring that forward uh, where it was applicable. And and the G Star was the first of that line because it really fit that uh, that base really well. It's a great plastic for your average player. I love to throw G Star fairway drivers i think it just is chef's kiss you know it's <laughs> yeah it's great at that but very fitting for your average or you know a large majority of disc golfers would would uh, enjoy the flight and characteristics of g-star and we wanted to bring characters to that lineup and that was very successful but then the rebranding of the logo happened and g-star is one of the few lines that didn't get the complete makeover because uh the art was so new that's the only place where you're really going to see a logo swap but everything else out there the templates were pretty dated we wanted to bring some new ideas and fresh looks to you know uh incorporate this new awesome logo that we just worked on yeah i mean we don't have every line of of discs that we've got here but we've got a handful of them and why don't you just quickly run through uh some of the rebranding what I'm holding here is this new Calvin Toro, Calvin Heimberg Champion Toro. And the Champion template looks something very similar to this. Uh, not everything has a little signature line on it, obviously, but uh, we wanted to keep the Champion a very clean look because, as you, as you can see, the flight plate is very clear and it gets... It gets busy when it's against other objects or out in the wild. And so we wanted something that's going to really show off the new branding and um, have a very bold model name that's, you could see this as a thumbnail and you know, okay, I can see Innova Toro right there. And I think it is a very clean looking stamp. Um, and I think it works really well with these busy backgrounds that are transparent. Yep. Yep. It's funny because... Uh, you hit on it, but one of the th one of the criticisms pe people make about that template right there is that it's so boring, it's so plain, and so simple. But when you put it into context, like you're just putting it up to your shirt, right? Hello, the champion plastic adopts whatever is behind it. Yeah, you know, and and that's exactly it. You know, I feel like uh, we want to show off the the beauty of that that clear plastic, and um, I think that template does a pretty good job of it. Yeah, seeing them all together in a lineup, like it does feel like a very strong branding. You know, it's it's uh, unique, modern, and clean. And sporty, too. Sporty. Yeah, real sporty. And and the champion line should be. I mean, that's what the a lot of the pros are leaning on to get the job done. So I, I, I agree. I'll kind of take on your star template here. This is also something that, you know, Levi talked about it, but we started tackling it more with G-Star, and that was putting really cool character stamps onto G-Star, well, we started doing the same thing with star templates, and this is the charger. I like it. I mean, I like the idea that, you know, we're starting to bring not only global branding, but we're actually bringing disc branding uh, onto the platforms. And so now all of a sudden, we're getting down to the model level branding. And so if you look for a charger in another disc, there's probably a good chance that you're going to see some similar elements to what you see here. Uh, even though the template may not be as defined. Levi and team have taken the branding, again, not just from a global level, but down to the model level. And that's something that I was pretty stoked about. A lot of people were still asking for like that premium 
premium plastic with a cool character stamp on it. And Star was something that stuck out as a very good possibility for that because it does have a very simple, clean background. A lot of the Star discs, there's some swirly ones here and there, but predominantly they're, they're a flat color background. And so it lets you do, it lets you pull off this complex, you know, uh, interesting character art that doesn't really work as well as, you know, on Champion or something else. But um, really like the uh, Star rebranding. It's it's simple. It keeps a lot of the disc info towards the bottom and it lets the character model name really integrate with the character art itself. And... Uh, you're not stuck with this template that every model name looks the same. If you were holding up a, a Firebird next to a Destroyer, like what's the difference, you know? But like with the character stamps, you can you can spot it, you know, from a mile away once you know what you're looking for. Yep, yep, agreed. And I think people are responding pretty positively to the character stamps. Talk about that that whale putter that you've got there, and how that sort of is that culmination of uh, the global branding and model branding. What I'm holding here is a new XT whale. This new template is one of my favorites that we've done so far. Uh, what I like about it is there's a, a plastic type branding that's that's small. The, the model branding takes over uh, with the name whale across the top. Uh, we've got the disk info approach and the flight numbers that are there but what sets this apart from other templates is the small little character icon that's right in the middle as a bit of of character to each of the templates to set them apart and make them different give them their own little bit of personality and we can still uh, move forward with character uh, branding without having the entire stamp be a character. So one of, one of my favorites, I really love the balance and everything about this template. We have, I think it works really well with every disc that we've tried it with so far. I don't know that you would be able to pull that off as successfully as your team has if you didn't have people who were experienced in the branding. Correct me if I'm wrong, but some of the people who may have created the full-blown illustration for a given model also do the little mini icons so you you maintain this look got to give it up to cj and chris you know they've been working together for a pretty long time they've been with us for a while and they're very synergistic uh, they can look at each other's art and kind of pull from that same feeling and kind of adapt their art uh, to work with the other style that was used and and we have a lot of uh I guess, general styles that we'll, we'll use, you know. Uh, so for this star, it's a little bit more simplified, graphic, modern, you know. So they're both shooting for that, but they, they definitely each have their own strengths when it comes to the types of characters that they work on. The XT template in particular, it was probably the most collaborative template out of anything that we've ever done. CJ came up with... a uh, a pretty good layout, initial layout. Um, I was able to take that and refine it and work in these icons uh, a little bit differently. And Chris has been coming up with most of the icons. So every single one of these that comes out, you know, there's there's fingerprints all over it. A complete rebrand of, of the Intimate Catalog does not happen overnight. We had the opportunity with the pandemic to uh, start sort of fresh with a lot of models that were out of stock and say, okay, cool, we have to mold these and stamp these anyway. Now's a great opportunity to get some new artwork in there. So that helped us out quite a bit. I don't want to go into the, the nitty gritty details here, but like it's going to take some time for this rebrand to completely take place across the entire catalog. You'll notice a lot of the template styles of uh, discs you might see new right away. The character styles, the new star character stamps and new DX character stamps, you know, those are coming out as new production is coming through. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot and it's going to take a while. I came in years after you. I recognize though that those were the years when Tour Series really started to elevate. 
Like, I know the factory store had been around for a while, but it didn't yet, it wasn't like this regular thing every season, it seemed like at least, that like everybody was clamoring for. And then all of a sudden, the Sex and Firebird became a thing. And I feel like that was the, the, this leading crest of a wave that tour series created. And then CJ comes on board, Chris comes on board, you're here, and you guys have been doing tour series. I mean, maybe kind of walk backwards a little bit on your experience in tour series and like where we are today, because the team now that you have here, they're responsible for doing all of the star team and champion team tour series art. Tour series has been something that I've been working with since inception. So I did the 2015 Nate Sexton. I did the 2016 and 2017. A lot of the the Mic Pro AVR designs. Uh, I think all of them actually. As things progressed and as you know demand grew, uh, there was more tour series players. There's more tour series discs. And um, Chris and CJ have really taken the torch and just brought those to new levels. So now the Sexton Firebird might be the most popular tour series disc, if not flat out disc of all time, you know. Um, they've, they've really taken those and um, can appreciate the importance of them and definitely put in the heart, soul, and thought that make the tour series is, is uh, what it is. Much like what you guys are doing with the model branding on our stock catalog, I feel as though you've sort of found a sweet spot where the team sort of owns their models, at least for those people who come back to the same discs year over year, and they have been able to sort of connect the dots on the Tour Series branding. There's certain ones where they don't mind switching uh artist to artist through the years and and there's other ones where they really want to feel like they own that space um and i think they've done just an amazing job at at uh, especially those passion ones that they they're like save that one for me bro <laughs> like don't let anybody else do that i don't want that uh but when you have an artist that's that excited about doing something you want them to be working on that project you know so um, we try to accommodate uh, their choices on what they feel strongly about and, you know, let them shine. All right. So, Levi, before you and I sat down, I got onto Instagram here and I said, hey, Levi and I are here and we're talking rebranding. Why don't you submit some questions? So, I don't know who cares, but let's see if anybody cares. From Drew Koff 22 any plans to release more of the old Discmania molds? Been loving the mid-disc three. There's kind of two parts to that. Yeah. So that's something that the factory store, and you'll notice if you look on the PDJ approval website, those discs are approved for the factory store and not under the main end of a branch. That's something that the factory store is working uh, independently of the art team in putting out those uh, discs. But at the same time, there's certain models that'll bridge that gap and come out like the Hawkeye. Hawkeye, great example. Right. They have a fairway disc and Innova has a Hawkeye. So formerly known as the FD. Right. And so there's there's other of those that are coming out and it all depends on demand and what people are asking for the most. So if there is a model out there that you have in your bag and you're running low on or you just want them to be made again, talk to the factory store. If it's popular enough the factory store will make them and if it's popular enough from there they'll come over to the main end of a wide distribution that's a really good point right there that you make moderate popularity factory store really broad popularity the end of a main catalog it might be the fairway disc from the factory store or the hawkeye from innova but it's all the same fd yeah pretty much the same uh, Jack Straw 1977 says, I love the DX stamps. Just saying. Sick, bro. Appreciate the feedback. Yeah, the DX uh, has come a long way. There's been some character remodeling um, 
throughout. Uh, so some characters have been redesigned before this rebrand had happened. And I keep pointing to my head because I'm yeah, cause also wearing that hat. Um, well, and we can, we can also put it over here. Yeah. Let's just point right just there. Just point right here. <laughs> Some of those DX characters have started a rebrand before that, but we have a new layout um, that we're working with for the DX stamps that gives the artwork a lot more room to shine. So I'm looking forward to a lot of those DX stamps um, kind of being reimagined and uh, the things that we're going to be putting out on there. Invader is one of my favorite examples of DX. That's one that you'll notice that we've continued the model branding throughout all the different lines that it's available. There's the same character in different positions doing different things with slightly different looks, but like the model text is always going to be the same for all of them. So um, it's very identifiable when somebody has an invader, even if you don't know the particular plastic type, like you're going to recognize that it's an invader. This is from AZ Todd Disc Golf, and he says, what is your brand personality? You have to go back to the origin of Innova, right? It was founded by two people who are world champions. You know, Dave was a world champion before the PDGA was formed. Harold Duvall was the very first PDGA world champion, and he ended up getting a second world title. And if you look at the history of open world champions to date, more of them are in of a world champions, I think, than all other manufacturers combined. Yeah, at least in, you know, the open. At least in the open, in the open division. Yeah. And you couple that with the fact that Dave designed the first true golf disc. And from that, he evolved the entire end of a catalog. And you could make, you could maybe make a leap that all the other golf discs out there at least owe some bit of credibility to Dave's designs. Dave is still here. He's insanely active all the time about recruiting and making sure that the team is that is here is getting the kind of support and hopefully out there winning titles, right? So sport and excellence is in our brand DNA, but then you can't also ignore that like the roots of where this sport derived and Dave talks about it, you know, and Dave loved it too. He would say that uh, this all started from Frisbee golf and Frisbee golf was a game and it, Frisbee golf was an approachable game that everybody can enjoy. And I think that he would say the same thing for disc golf. Aside from competition, everybody should find disc golf ex accessible. You should be able to take an end of a disc off the shelf and there's one made for you. I don't care if you're five years old and never thrown a disc or you're Don Shin and you're a hundred, over a hundred years old and you're bombing your 130G Mamba, right? And everywhere in between. And everything in between, right? Our brand personality is so global and so wide. I would say that, like, you know, we are very open. We believe in excellence, but we also believe in community. Looking forward, you know, like forward thinking. Innova, innova right? Innovation is in, in what we do, you know? And what does that mean? Like, what's next? I think we're always looking forward. We're looking for the future. And that is, you can't do that without a community. You know, I'm, I'm curious to hear like your take on what, what our brand personality is. Yeah. I mean, it's really hard to come up with anything outside of what you just said, because I think you nailed a lot of the points, you know, but it's always been from champions, but not only for champions, but for everybody, you know, we want to make disc golf accessible. And what, what's the, uh, is that a Harold Duvall line making the world a better place, one throw at a time. Throw at a time. Yeah, make the world a better place, one throw at a time. Yeah, so it's, it's uh, you know, those really fall to fall to heart in, in what I think our brand image is. And it's, it's, it's fun. It's, it's approachable. Yeah, approachability, accessibility, disc golf for everybody. And John Hollingshead asks, what time frame was the process of the rebrand from start to finish? We kind of touched on that a little bit, but maybe echo it. It's still a work in progress, you know. Um, there are certain templates that we still, some, some lesser used templates that we still have to get to. Um, so a rebranding for just the Innova logo, I'd say that was a good month plus. If we were only working on the Innova rebrand, 
probably would have been less. But we still have our daily responsibilities, our daily stuff that we're going through. And so this rebrand is kind of, let's make some time to work this out on top of everything else that we have going on. About two months, um, I, I'd say we had it dialed where we wanted it. From 503, he asks, well, he doesn't ask. He says, the end of a brand is timeless. And then in parentheses, but we need a fresh run of Eagle L's. <laughs> <laughs> it's an infinite mold, is it not? Oh, is it like a, a not a pharaoh? Ask Dave, and I'm pretty sure the Eagle L is is one of the infinite molds it's... that you can pick up. So maybe we'll figure it out and like we'll put it like right here or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, dude. Oh, and if I'm wrong, like he's right. We need a new run. Check out the offerings at Millennium, Heiserbaum, Infinite, right? Yep. Because to your point, we make discs for them that are very similar, but probably slightly tweaked in some way, right? Yeah, they might they might take uh, part of a disc or like say, I really like the way that these eagles fly, but can I make them a little bit less stable? And Dave says, well, we already got that. It's the Eagle L. We don't run it anymore, but we'll make it for you. To all of you that stuck around long enough to listen to Levi and I go on and on about rebranding, disc design, uh, the illustration team, thank you. Leave any comments that you may have for Levi, for the art team, for me, down below. Um, we'll do our best to get to those questions. If you like this kind of really long form storytelling about the insides of what's going on at the operations of Innova, tell us. You know, we'll, we'll do more of it. But, you know, if you guys don't really care, meh, maybe maybe we'll, like, shorten them. Dial it down a bit. Hopefully this gives you guys a little bit more insight into what the creative team does here at Innova, uh, how passionate and how much we care about the product, the design, and the look of things, really to package it all for all of you. And we'd love to hear your feedback on how we're doing. Let us know. And, yeah, I don't know. Anything else, dude? Would love to get the design team together. So if that's something that you guys want to see, maybe a larger group setting, everybody talking, that's something that I would think would be pretty cool. So let us know in the comments if that's something that you want to check out. Um, what might be kind of fun is to pick like a one of these bigger projects that we do and have everybody come in. Maybe we just focus on one project. And just kind of like start to finish, just talk about it. Throw up sketches. Yeah. yeah. How did we get to here? And then like, boom, here's the final piece. People might dig that. Yeah, just have like a brown the table, table. kind of kind of thing. Love it. Nice job, dude. Thanks, man. Thank everybody for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching, Oscar. Thanks for being here. Well, this would be like our sixth cut. Yeah, give Oscar a high five because we've done this three times already. We would have done a fourth, fifth, and sixth if he wasn't here. So, Oscar, thank you.